Hey y'all, welcome to the Max. Today we are taking y'all on a tour around the farm. We're gonna show you our grounds and the animals that we have working this land. So let's go. Here is where our Katahdin sheep, we have hair sheep here in the south. Wool would probably not weather really well here especially in our summers so we're gonna go walk over and we're gonna show you our sheep and tell you the reason why we have them i would say that the sheep is probably one of the easiest things on the farm wouldn't you they really are and for us we've learned to rotate them so well and they've gotten used to our farm where most people have to have net fencing things like that we use hot fences which are like two or three strands and then we have barbed wire also and they all they stay in everything they do you really can't compare them to a goat in my opinion because they really manage well in health we don't treat them we don't have to trim hooves and they never get out they're very low maintenance and even if they do get out like for instance we had a baby get out not not too long ago they were just trying to get to a, the feed that was on the ranger the grass is always yeah. greener on the other True. side right and uh when they did that they literally got out and then he was like oh man i'm outside from my mom's he tried to get back in he, re he realized he couldn't so he just waited on us to get there and then we let him back in he walked right on back in so the sheep for us here are really low maintenance but we also process them which is a huge plus and they also help us keep the land clean they're wonderful lawn mowers and also in every field that they rotate in they're dropping manure as they fertilize the fields behind the cows it's really a win-win so they're helping the fields they're very lightweight they're cleaning up the junk stuff fertilizing the grass and we're able to put them on the table for when we want them they have this forest right here too along with this field that they're in so they can go in cool off eat actually under the, the shrubbery so it kind of cleans up the areas along with the pigs but it allows that area to look better be cleaner and also feed our animals really without having to bush hog or clean out from under the trees we have three generations on our farm one thing that we've done with all our animals is we we tried to clean quote unquote clean up our herds and what i mean by that is is no medicine uh, only the strong will survive and i hate to say it like that but it's the truth these sheep have never been treated and we have three generations right here so daisy which is the one with the black spot over here along with trump which is our main ram we actually have a video on them from probably what three years ago misty four four years ago and then there's a second generation you also and then there's also third generations such as our, our new ram that will replace trump one day and also another weather that we've cut so we have six lamb right here they're phenomenal again just so i don't have to bush hog everything they clean and they provide us another source of red meat. So they have hair and they actually do shed their hair. It's really cool. It gets real thick and they get real big and fluffy during the winter. That's their way to keep themselves warm. But during the summer, they will start shedding that off. They can use trees and limbs and even there's some of our fence posts they rub up against and that really helps them to shed that hair off so that they can be more cool when it's summertime. When they're in hot fence, we don't worry about that. But when it becomes hot and they need to start shedding, we'll put them in a hard fence like here. So it allows them to rub it on off because they can't really do that with hot fence. We also have a little contraption we've built out of a hog panel that will just basically go in a circle. We just strap it up and they can also rub against that. That way they can get it on off before it gets really hot weather. So this section right here, you see we have a couple of things that we've already flagged. Most of those are huckleberry and elderberry. So we've planted some things over here that we really just want to be more or less in nature so that we can forage for them. Now we might not reap the full benefits of it, but we want it to be something that will be here forever for our kids sake. He'll use sections of this area back here with sheep and cattle and some pigs as well. So you see, we try to give them as natural habitats as possible. Now they will not be around my trees. <laughs> so those will not be included, the ones that I just planted. And the whole purpose is to clean up underneath 
but we run them in temporary fencing so it works out great uh, our, our goal was hopefully putting a little bit more permanent fence in here but to be honest with you it's not a necessity because they do fine in the temporary fencing so we're leaving the sheep leaving the foraging area where are we going yep. next so right across from it is our pig forest this is where they are most of the time permanently we do like i said over here which we're going to get to in a minute on the opposite side we have already moved our american guinea hog he's across on the other side so part of the reasons we were saying we use this too this is our most permanent place so that we can uh really just kind of watch the babies closer and it does make it a little bit difficult more difficult for them to get out when they're contained in a fence like this and again as you see this used to be all completely overgrown Every it looked just it like that overgrown. looked all like that back in there so they've really cleaned all of this up this is pretty well their their home this is their place they have a humongous acreage to forge all of this is about what an acre acre and a half no, the perimeter fencing is around three acres and then we have some fencing going between it we also have a little barn just depending on how we're dividing so like right now this big mama here we have two mamas that are fisting to deliver this is ginger and then we have oreo that's fisting to deliver as well she's in the forest we'll let you see her and then we have the boars back in the back we have some other surprises right here in the barn we'll let you see our goal with our our pig and we did a video on it how we raise pig for literally zero dollars and how we actually uh, love raising pig it's a good part of our our farm but we'll show you the other side of the forest with the other pig and that way you see the whole operation so they're fisting to deliver what's your favorite is it this pig which is your pork chops and bacon pigs what we call our commercial breeds or do you like the lard hogs, the American guinea hogs? Well, that's a kind of a loaded question. Well, I think I like those for the pork chops bacon. Like you said, there's huge benefits to those, but the, and those mamas are such good mamas, you will not get around their babies. So that's kind of like a pro and a con together. There are times we need to maneuver them when they have piglets and when they won't let you around their babies that can kind of be a problem in itself but it's a good thing too because we don't have to worry about them not protecting their babies and something happened to their babies because they are very good mamas and when i say that i mean that we did have one take colby down one time from hey, messing with hey. her piglets especially oreo right here so, yeah she is a fine mama but don't mess with her babies which is a, is a good thing you can see she's really rounding out and really starting to fill up so this will be her fourth litter. Yeah. This will be her fourth litter here on our farm. Wonderful mamas. She's actually bigger than Ginger in size wise. However, Ginger always has more babies. But they are wonderful mamas. The American guinea hogs are kind of the complete opposite. And we're first gonna show you the mamas right here. Now I wanna show you the reason we have this hay bale here is because anytime you have spent hay or bad hay or that's been in rain, when you own a farm, you don't wanna waste that it becomes bedding for the hogs and so we bed deep bed these these hog barns and these barns we never keep animals in it full time but if any time pigs are having babies or we're trying to separate something this barn does come in handy so it is nice plus it's covered and like misty said we've got what in there right now so this is our american guinea hog mama i showed you her she had her, her babies right when we come back from the oaky homestead they're very docile you know they call them the homestead pig for a reason I could go in there and get every one of her babies and she's going to snort at me, but she's not going to try to take me down like the other ones would, <laughs> would. But we, you know, of course we use them. They're mostly for sausage. There are lard hogs. They are very docile, which is a good thing. So our lard hogs really make a difference on our farm because that is our natural fat source for our cooking. We use lard and then we also use butter from our dairy girl. So our, our goal is to always have all the fats raised right here on our farm. Yep. This is the rest of the, the field right here. So For the females. See, and we'll go to the males in just a second. You can see that they have a humongous area to roam. There's a lot of stuff for them to forge on out here. There's our big daddy boar. He is the one that has bred all of the females except for the American, American guinea hogs up front. He is huge don't be fooled by his looks because he is ginormous but you can see we've kept him back here we're trying to get him 
uh, used to this area because we have separated the males and females. We're gonna let our females deliver and stay up there for a, for a couple more months. He'll be hanging out back here until we're ready for them to be rebred and we'll let them open up the gate and let them go up. The other pig that we have out here is our cut boar. He's running right there. So he is actually the next one that's gonna go to freezer camp. We will grow him off for a couple more months. And where our plan is with the mamas that we have now, we are going to keep either five or six this time to put back. So we're gonna be growing out actually a lot more next year. Our last litters, so loud. so loud our last litters that we have had we have pretty well sold them all except for just a couple pigs for profit right so it really helps cover everything that we have put in them food wise this batch however we will keep some back to raise up and then their next couple of batches as those that we have chosen we're going to raise up we will sell the next litters off that will help cover our feed. So it's really just this beautiful cycle of the pigs are paying for themselves, they're providing for our freezer, and for the most part, they're fairly easy too. So the backside of our pig forest is actually where our sheep come back in. So this is that same fence. Look at the area they have. They can eat all through this. They've been nibbling on some, some shrubs over here. So you see how thick this is? So on this other side, that, see how thick and then this is where the sheep have been see how thinned out that is all underneath that helps us because we're in a very wet area here in south mississippi and and we see a lot of snakes a lot of moccasins or cotton mouths so it's good to be able to kind of see what's going on so they've kind of cleaned up all under there uh, basically back here we've also planted some more foraging options some more huckleberry elderberry throughout the property this is another field that we use for the sheep and it's just a beautiful a beautiful cycle as missy was talking about with the sheep the pig they all provide for themselves but also if we provide the grounds they they clean up and work for us at the same time so we're providing for them they're providing for us it's a beautiful beautiful cycle so we're walking back up from the back pig forest and we've also got some more things planted on this edge of the pond too where misty and the kids are walking you see all the orange flags she got onto me because I don't think I did it. I think it was Aiden, but uh, some of our other shrubs got ran over. So she brought these big red orange flags to put all over our property. <laughs> so that way we won't do it again. Those are not quite ready yet, buddy. Ruby. They're getting close, aren't they? Over here, I'm pretty excited about this. This is the area, again, we've talked to y'all about foraging and trying to build an area where not only we can benefit from it now, but it will be here years to come. This was a cutting that was actually mailed to us about two years ago, and you can see it is finally growing. Tell it us was what this actually, is. So this is mulberry. It was go. actually a whole lot prettier than this but we had a really bad cold snap and it killed back everything so it's kind of recovering from that now she two thinks we'll run over this one too but look it's got a orange flag but it's like bigger than you so i don't think we're gonna hit it just making sure y'all <laughs> so we have two muscadines some sets of blackberries and a couple of pear trees actually just one pear tree down there and one pear tree over there so not only are we trying to put food here that we're growing all <laughs> not only are we trying to put food over here that we're growing off but we're trying to put food on the opposite side as well and if you take a look right there we have food on the other side our garden as well look at this uh, guy he's our second one that would be going to freezer camp so you see how we we, we incrementally go from different litter, litters so we have tons of meat that we put up over the last year but also we have another one that's getting growing ready off. and then all of a sudden a little brother that's growing off and then we'll have another litters coming like misty said yep. go stand this corn so this is our sweet corn or one of our sweet corn patches we actually if you remember in misty's last video we lost a big part of corn after oaky and so now this is this is growing pretty well i wish it was thicker but misty come look come stand right here so they get sized you're harley so you see it's got some height to it especially being sweet corn yeah it's growing okay it was still not as beautiful as our other corn 
that got blown over. So we were real bummed out about that, but we're gonna get some corn. We'll yeah. get some to put up in the freezer. And again, organic growing corn is hard, but we are doing all that we can to grow it. Uh, one good thing is we have a secondary set that we just planted literally yesterday, a field corn. We're able to get a second harvest off that. So between all the areas of corn that we're growing, uh, it's a game changer for us, so it allows us to put it all together and have a, a good surplus of corn. So we told you the American guinea hog mama and her babies. The daddy is over here. He's and a whopper. the clipboard is over here. He's a whopper, isn't he? He will be the next set of lard that I bring in. And uh, you can see they have a huge section of forest over here that they are working on cleaning up. It is to the opposite side of where we were just at down there. We have a hay barn in the middle. And they have plenty of room to forage. That's actually what they're here. doing now. They're foraging a little bit. They do. So it, it is beautiful over here. There's all kinds of uh, herbs that I've seen growing. There's blackberry bushes, dewberry bushes. There's all kinds of stuff over here that they eat on. So this is where these guys are. And we separated them out so that the mama could have her babies. And when she, when we weaned them off, she will stay by herself for a little while and then we will rebreed them to produce babies early spring. Berries, please. I don't see a bug on it anyway. It's oh, protein good. if so. <laughs> you see the fence that she's stepping over is just a Premier One fence with a Gallagher charger. It's perfect for us to work these docile hogs because they can clean up areas. We can rotate them, move them. It's just a game changer on our farm. So right here we have the new planted gardens. This is some more lady peas that we planted, like a cream pea. Again, in the south, we can plant two or three helpings of peas. So we just took in one set of beans. The other set of beans will be coming in very soon. And we've got another set planted. We got some more tomatoes on the other side of the corn. We've actually planted all this other in corn as well. This is where American breasts are. Y'all heard me talk about them multiple times. They are just a couple of months short of the rooster's going to freezer. You can see this area right here. We have rotated them all on this so they get fresh grass every couple of days. We, my plan with them really is when they get just a little bit bigger, I'm going to go ahead and put my hens and maybe one or two roosters when they get a little bit bigger over in the barn. And when I'm ready to collect their eggs for hatching out, because that's what these, that's what their purpose is, is these are just egg layers. Their babies will be my meat birds. So this batch will be going over into the barn with the other chickens when they're laying and we're ready to hatch out meat birds. They will be laying over in the big barn and then we will separate those out and raise them up. So we still have a little bit of time before we grow these up. They start laying eggs and we're ready to crossbreed. But we are very excited because now we have a sustainable meat source in chicken without having to deal with the Cornish cross which are not very hardy. They don't lay. We're, we're always at the beck and call of a company to provide those. So we're very excited about these and we can't wait to show y'all the journey. On the other side of the corn, we have some more peas planted. If you're interested in seeing all our gardens or most of our gardens, we have a garden tour. We will link it below in the pinned comments. And also it will be on the cards above here, but it is a game changer when you talk about growing food on your farm. Another big asset here for our farm is our lake. Our lake can be utilized in so many different ways. We're actually fishing to harvest some fish out of here. It allows us to put in our aquaponics too by having perch and bass available at all times too. So another good food sustainability and also a way to always have water here on the farm. It's a spring fed lake. So something that we added last year was this little corral that's right under our barn. In South Mississippi, we get storms pretty frequently, especially in the spring. Sometimes they go all the way into December though. And we do have like our sheep. There are times when they're in the temporary fencing and we think there's a storm coming and they need more shelter. We move them here. Also, when we know, know that we have a bigger animal in transition, we have also moved them up here as well. The other side is our chicken and rabbit barn our chickens we have tons of different breeds we absolutely love the availability with having eggs farm fresh eggs the upside to having rabbits is multiple things we sell their babies which again is a little bit of profit on the farm we use we can use them for meat if we ever needed to 
But fertilizer is a really, really big thing with our rabbits because we make compost tea, we add them straight back into our beds. So there is a huge benefit of having rabbits. I, was, I actually have 10 babies right now that need to go. I have a couple of bucks that could also go, but right now they're dumping loads and loads of fertilizer. So we're just using that everywhere. And this is our big, rabbit rabbit and chicken barn it stays pretty pretty clean under here so we're we're real happy about that and because of this big open breezeway it, keep, it actually keeps it cooler in here because the the because the wind is just passing through mm -hmm. and another another really cool thing is the way we built this later this summer we're going to be taking those panels down it's big enough to fit a tractor in We'll come and get all of our chicken bedding out of here and put those in places that we want to break down through the fall and winter. The corn, which we've talked about a lot, is it will be one spot. We literally can just pop those right back up and it's no big deal. So this is our chicken and rabbit barn and the other side is the holding pen for animals temporarily when we need that available. dairy girls are going through transition right now this is day number two that they have been without babies we are currently milking three jerseys you see these three mamas right here now we did have a real bad incident this past winter with our oldest dairy mama she got milk fever we didn't catch it in time we lost we lost her so now we have an orphan calf so we had four calves all of their babies and the mama that we lost three milking mamas and four babies calf sharing we would get anywhere between two to three gallons a day but now that the babies are off of their mom we're gonna we're not even gonna know what to do with all of the milk which is a good thing so we currently have this one up for sale she is go going to be a wonderful little homestead cow she's real small her daddy's actually a registered miniature She's real easy to handle. I say that, I'm not really the one handling very much. I'm just telling y'all what the handler says. She is. <laughs> so she's really easy to handle. Her baby is still with her right now. We really need to downsize these, this lady though and her little man because we just don't need that many milk cows on our land. We have more of our beef herd, which we're fixing to show y'all. And we really want more space now for our beef herd and their babies. But overall, having these girls on the farm is a huge deal. We can do so much with raw dairy milk and it really never ceases to amaze me that the amount of people that are still so uneducated about raw dairy milk. I don't wanna give y'all a whole spill on that. I will just say that our generations have really been brainwashed to think that raw dairy milk is a bad thing. Our family has been drinking it for almost five years now. We're still alive. That should tell you something. Y'all quit listening to the government. There's absolutely nothing wrong with raw dairy milk. I will say, if you're not milking, do be sure that you know where you're getting your milk from. Raw milk is not a bad thing. I just want y'all to know that. On the other side are our registered Herefords. We wanted to clean our herds up, so the jerseys are one, the Herefords are the other. We've got a few, that's our biggest mama out there, and we have one more big mama, and then we have a second generation and a third generation. And that's all these bellowing down here. We have about four steer that we're growing right now in different stages. So it's good to know that that beef is always providing for us, just like the pigs. It allows us to have meat flowing in all part of the year. Yeah, and you see our Hereford bull in here with our dairy mamas? So she is rebred, she is not, and Trixie was or was not? She's not, I mean, she just had the baby, so she was a little. All right, so we have one that is already rebred, two that are not, so he is. In with them for that reason. Yes, we are currently rebreeding our dairy mamas back because the babies have come off. Yes, we're breeding, we're breeding these dairy to a beef herd, a beef cattle such as Hereford. 
So we're getting this beautiful mixed breed here. One good thing about the mix is it allows you to have the fat content from the jersey passing down from it, but also allows for a, a bigger body compared to the, you know, a Darius. Dairy cows are tending to be more boned and not as much structured with meat. Whereas these guys are thicker and bigger. So it adds more meat to the babies to then turn around, sell or process. Now, if you look all the way out there, I have a little Jersey bull growing up. So the whole time we're worried about growing a mixed breed up, a cross breed to be able to process, we're also growing up a little Jersey bull so we can breed back and actually have pure jerseys to milk again. So it's always growing, always changing, but it's a sustainable look of farming. Just like we do with all the other animals, Hattie Mae, which is our, our beautiful Great Pyrenees, she's getting some age on her, so she's not able to do all the chores and, and tasks that she needs to do. So look at these two. These are our new ones, the Border Collies. So they're learning, boy. they're learning. They are beautiful, beautiful dogs. Hey girl. Yeah. Right out here is our milk barn. We actually milk out here every morning. We've been milking in that little barn for what, about five years now? Yes, we this past fall we did we did some renovation did, on it, but we did the structure up, up, itself. Some upkeep yeah. to it. I mean we probably haven't invested that little barn probably didn't cost a thousand dollars to build overall. And even the wood oh, that we refixed oh. and see for five years we've been running yeah. cows through that little spot, milking over there. So you don't oh. need a lot. You don't need this big infrastructure. All you need is just a little cover that literally is like a twelve by twelve barn. Let's on one walk side. them. Let's walk them to the stanchion and show them the the V and all. Yes. Okay. And we also have an old video on that, guys. Be sure on the Max channel. Look at the playlist with cows. You're gonna find a section that has stanchion, how to build a stanchion, how to train your cow. All of those. If you're interested in that, will be over in that playlist. Y'all be sure to check it out. <laughs> every morning. Every morning at 4 a.m. This is where Misty comes. <laughs> no. This, this is where, where I come. man comes. <laughs> yeah, I don't do this, but yeah, I just wanted to show y'all because I really feel like this would be a huge benefit for y'all. This is where our girls come in. Their heads go here. They get some alfalfa while they're milking. Here she comes. She thinks it's feeding time. If we get a mama that has just calved and she really is not wanting to separate from her baby very well, we really don't have to use this very often. Sometimes we do. So another really cool thing about having this stanchion is the size of your cow. Whenever they come in, like we have a full size, always home miniature. But to keep them from backing out, this right here is adjustable. This having this option really is cool because you can adjust it and really keep them in if for whatever reason they're irritated and they try to get out. We just wanted to give y'all a roundabout tour of our land, the layouts, the type of structures that we have and the animals we have and why we have them. So if you want to know more about our gardens, check out the garden tour. You can see all the gardens that, that finishes out the farm and garden tour and the homestead tour all in all. So it's going to be a good video to check out and then come back to this one and watch it again if you want to. We hope you guys enjoy this video. Happy homesteading y'all. Happy homesteading y'all.